Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Okay, can we just go back and do it? I just want to add something. Okay, we're rolling. <laughs> Remember, it was the Roman Catholic Church who took Jerome's Vulgate, the Latin Bible, which was not a very good translation, and <clears throat> alienated people from the Word of God with this language that they could not understand. Those who get into the King James only school of thought begin doing the same thing. You're making the Word of God less understandable. Although I would say, of course, that the King James is a valid translation, while the Vulgate is not a very good one. But the Vulgate of Jerome, the Latin Bible, which is the Bible of the Roman Catholic Church, was the Bible of choice of John Calvin. Some people try to say that the King James is the Reformation Bible. This is silly. It was a hundred years after Luther nailed his 95 Theses to the door of the Wittenberg Cathedral that the King James was first published in 1611. It was nearly a hundred years later. The Bible that triggered, ignited the Reformation was the New Testament of Erasmus of Rotterdam. Now, King James didn't exist then. It was an English translation of it that came later, and even then, it, it, it took quite a bit of revision. There, there were multiple editions of it. When the Pilgrim Fathers came to America, they didn't want the King James because King James persecuted them. They took Calvin's Geneva Bible, the Bible of the Pilgrim Fathers who came to America, and of the nonconformists in England. It wasn't the King James. It was the Geneva Bible. They didn't want the King James. King James was semi-Catholic to them. He was their persecutor. When you read what secular historians like Winston Churchill in his epic classic, The History of the English-Speaking People, read what Churchill and other historians said about King James. He was not a positive figure in British history. Well, let's go even further with this now. What translations are good? There are good ones and bad ones, but there are no perfect ones. We can rely on the Word of God as it is in Nehemiah 8.8. 8. The original autographs are inspired. The closer something is to the original meaning of the original language, the better it is. The New American Standard is a valid translation. The New English Version, NEV, not NIV, but NEV, is a very good translation. Because a version will highlight something or italicize something or footnote something with a number, and will say, not all manuscripts can contain this verse. That does not mean that it's omitting those verses. It's simply trying to be faithful to the manuscript record that we have. But the King James ignoramuses will say, see, it takes it out of the Word of God. No, it doesn't. It simply italicizes it and footnotes it, saying not all manuscripts contain it, or that it's only in the Dead Sea Scrolls or something of that nature. But they have two standards. There are plenty of things that are italicized in the King James, that the King James interpolates. Again, the King James only people are generally ignorant. And the only thing worse than an ignorant person who pretends he knows something that he doesn't is when they become so adamant about it and so absurd that even when you show them from the original languages that's not what it means, they will still hold on to it. This is ridiculous. These people, these are people of low intelligence or something. I don't know what's wrong with them. 
is obviously a spiritual pride. When you show them this is not in the Texas Receptus, this is not even in the Masoretic, the King James gets it wrong, they'll go with the King James. There was one heretic, now on his third mar marriage, Peter Ruckman, who's, who's a white supremacist, he's a racist. He actually, from the pulpit, has referred to black people as niggers. He's a racist. He actually used that word in church from a pulpit, talking about black people, and they're black believers. Peter Ruckman, again, on his third marriage, I was listening to his tape trying to justify his multiple divorces and remarriage. And he said, at no time will I refer to the original Greek or Hebrew for the simple reason that when someone deviates from the King James, they go into error. <laughs> He's into error. He's into immoral living based on his error, which you can only somehow get from twisting the scriptures. But that's what he does. Yet he's a hero to some of the King James only people. Peter Ruckman said that additions to the King James Bible not found in the original Greek and Hebrew. And he admits there are things in the King James that are not in the original manuscripts are further revelation. In other words, in 1611, Jesus gave further revelation. However, at the end of the book of Revelation, Jesus said, that's it, it's finished, it's closed. Don't anybody add anything to this. <laughs> well, the Ruckmanites, the King James only Ruckmanites, they're doing what the Mormons did and what the Muslims do. They added another testament. The Mormons say the Book of Mormon is the third testament. The Muslims say the Quran is the third testament. Peter Ruckman's King James only people are doing the same thing. They're saying things not found in the original Greek and Hebrew that were added by the 1611 edition of the King James or further revelation. This is a heretical statement. Yet, there's people who follow this nonsense. Another fraud, another charlatan, was Gail Ripplinger, an absolute charlatan. When she was interviewed by Wayne House, it was uncovered that her degree was not in manuscript history or in Greek or in Hebrew or biblical languages, none of that. She had no background in linguistics. Her degree was in home economics. She was an expert on laundry detergents or something like that. She wrote this ridiculous book, a ridiculous, stupid, stupid book. She cannot even read Greek or Hebrew herself. She's a complete charlatan, debunked as a phony. But people will still follow it and believe it. Ignorance is one thing, but once you instruct an ignorant person and they still prefer their ignorance, don't even waste your time talking to people like that. Again, I respect the King James. I respect the fact that many of its source manuscripts came from godly men like William Tyndale. I respect the legacy and tradition of Mr. Coverdale. I'm not putting the King James translation down at all. It is a valid translation. Although it has problems and errors, it is a valid translation. But King James onlyism is utter nonsense. The only thing more silly than King James only are the people who believe it and promote it. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you.